Today I'm going to talk about uh, network booting a computer, okay? And that's what I'm doing with this one here. There's no hard drive or USB stick or anything on this computer. It's just booting off the network. So while that's booting up, I'll just go through what I'm going to talk about. Mainly what I'm going to look at is packet captures, of course, because that's where you see everything that's going on. And since it's a network boot, it makes sense to have a look at the network. So as that's booting up, it's just grabbing its images from the server, which it's finished now. And now it's just continuing its, its boot up with those images. So I'm going to use uh, this as a demo and I've got the laptop here to do packet captures. So uh, we'll dive into this now. Okay, I've just turned the computer on and at the moment it has nothing set up. It's got no hard drive inside. It has no USB drive with an operating system on and the network's not ready to serve an operating system. So you may have seen this before if you've tried to, to boot a computer without the hard drive in. It uh, may have resorted to looking on the network for one. Now this has failed because as you can see it's just looking for um, a TFTP server to try and get some files. So it did its DHCP, got an IP address, but it's pretty much stuck now. So it's going to time out uh, from this TFTP and just get stuck in a loop basically. Okay, there's the timeout and we're back to square one. So it can't find an operating system. So that's where we are. Okay, so what do we know so far? Well, we know we've got an IP address from the DHCP server and we know it tried to get an operating system from a TFTP server and we know it failed. Okay, so logically thinking, you might say, okay, well, why don't we set up a TFTP option in the DHCP server? Now, I know there's a TFTP option, option 66, where you can set up a TFTP server, but first of all, I'm going to actually packet capture that process there and have a look what happened just there. I mean, that's what we saw on the screen, but I want to see what happened on the network. All right, so here we go again. I've got um, Wireshark running doing a capture here, and you can see right there it's, it's doing its DHCP as it's reporting. Now here, for the TFTP, what you can see in the capture is every one of those dots is an attempt for it to grab a file, which it's failing. But it can also see the IP address that it's going for. Now it's looking for the operating system from TFTP on server 192.168.1.254. Now there's no TFTP server there, that's just what the gateway happened to be. So that seems to be what it's trying. But it's going to fail. Okay, a few goes and that's it. Okay, so that's what happened on the network. Now here's the DHCP Discover, the first packet that came out of this computer when I turned it on. Now what it was doing was looking for a DHCP server, that's why it broadcast it out there, and it gave, gave some information out. And one of them is this uh, globally unique identifier. Okay, so it gave out this number here, which we'll come back to in a minute. But um, one of the other things, these, these options here, the DHCP options, one of them is the request. Now, it wants a whole lot of things, okay? It wants the broadcast address, it wants, yeah, domain name server, all the normal stuff you'd want. But it also asks for some extra things. One of them being the TFTP server name. Now, that might lead you to think that as soon as we put a server name in there, we'll be right. If you look at the response that came from the DHCP server, we didn't, we didn't give it any uh, TFTP uh, server. I did give it a file name though, so if we go back here, you'll see that it requested a boot file name. Okay, it wants option 67, which is boot file name. The server has that. It gave it option 67 and said, oh yeah, here you go. There's the boot file name, pixielinux.0. Okay, but we're still struggling with this TFTP because there's no TFTP there even though the client wanted it. So, if I have a look on the DHCP server, which is PFSense, you can see that um, for DHCP you have all these options, and you can add a specific option. You can see I've added option 67, which is text, which was the file name, okay? That's why it received that file name when it asked for it. But I don't have option 66 for TFTP, so I could add that, or it's got a little shortcut here because it's a commonly used one. So if I put in the actual TFTP server value there and save that, we might be okay, but are we? Okay, so now I'll try that again. I'm doing a packet capture again to have, a, have another look, of course. So here we go. 
Same as before, DHCP first up and uh, TFTP. Okay, it's still struggling though. Now I know I just set the TFTP server as an option, but it's not working. It's the same as before, it's just bouncing around. And if I have a look at the packet capture coming in, you can see its destination is still um, the default gateway address, not the 1.1 address that I gave it. You can see it's trying to access the right file though, but it's not going to find it there. Okay, and it fails just like before. So what went wrong? Okay, so I'll have a look at that DHCP exchange this time. Now the discover will be the same, but uh, let's have a look at the response that we got. Now as we knew before, we got the file name, it's happy with that. Uh, we've now got option 66, we've got the TFTP server name, which is telling it 192.168.1.1, but it was still trying to access it from 192.168.1.254, and that's why it's failing, because that's not the TFTP server. Servers at 1.1. So what went wrong? Okay, so even though it got a TFTP server IP address in option 66, in the response from the DHTP server, it pretty much ignored that and tried to go to .254 anyway. Okay, that's because even though it's looking to use TFTP to download its operating system, it doesn't get it from that option 66. So I can remove that. And I'll do that now and I'll show you what has to be done for it to get the, uh, the operating system. Okay, so back on the DHCP server, I'm gonna get rid of that TFTP option, okay, because we don't need that. Down here in network booting, I am going to enable that and give it the option there. And the server, which is 1.1, is actually called next server. Okay, so I'll save that and have another go. Okay, I've just hit the power button. And there's no DHCP option 66, but we do have a next server option. So we'll see what happens. Okay, it's found it, it's doing stuff. Okay, so what just happened? Okay, if I have a look at the DHCP response this time, we'll look for option 66, it's not there, okay? We didn't need that TFTP option 66, because as we know, it didn't use it. But what it does use is way up the top here, this address here, next server IP address, okay? That's what it looks for, just before these options come into it, really. You've got uh, next server IP address 1.1, and that's where it went to, okay? So it started looking for TFTP at 1.2.168.1.1, and it kept downloading, it got all the files. Now, if we have an even closer look at these files, um, let's have a look. The files that it's actually looking for, we'll just uh, filter that. Okay, they're the files that it requested. Now, it didn't get all of them, but it requested them. So you can see the first one, Pixie Linux, that's the one we told it in the DHCP server to start with. So it did that, got its next one. Now you can see here, there's a directory, and then this here. Now you may recall at the start, there was that um, globally unique identifier, which comes up. Now what that would do is if that file existed here, it would go to that one, meaning that there's something specific to this hardware, and it would have loaded that, but there wasn't. So I tried the next one, which is MAC addressed, and tried the next one, which is hex for the IP address, and it gets less fussy until you finally go, okay, there's nothing specific, just do the default. And that's what I've got on the server is default. So it downloaded that one and, and the rest, and it just went from there. I'll show you the files that are on the TFTP server. And as you can see, they're the same files, obviously, that it grabbed from TFTP when we looked in Wireshark. But you can see this one's a directory. So if, um, if I have a look at that, you can see there's just a file called default. And if you remember, it grabbed that file called default because there was nothing more specific. But if you rename that to uh, the MAC address or the um, globally unique identifier, it'll, it'll download that instead. So you can be more specific if you want. Okay, I've just started this up again. So as you know, it does DHCP initially and then TFTP to get the first couple of files which we've looked at and that's doing that there and it's done that now and what happens now the guy who made slacks he set it up so it moves to http for the rest of it because if you've used tftp before you'll know it's not real good for uh, big data transfers so it's done the transfer via http of the operating system so i could pull that network cable out now but i'm going to use it for doing things and uh, it just continues from there so as I said, this operating system is um, Slacks, okay? Um, I used it years ago, it's pretty good. I'm just getting back into it now. 
So this runs in RAM, it's nice and quick, and now it can load off a network. So try that out, and if you get stuck with TFTP, just think it's not the TFTP option, it's the boot flag next server TFTP. So have fun. Throwing large amounts of data. So, what the fuck's going on here?